This is VOA News. I'm David Byrd. President Donald Trump is formally objecting to Democrats' impeachment inquiries and not saying if he will cooperate with the probe. AP Washington correspondent Sagar Magani has the latest from the White House. He maintains it had nothing to do with a political rivalry. I don't care about Biden's campaign, but I do care about corruption. And says there was a lot of it. I believe there was tremendous corruption with Biden. Whose son Hunter was on the board of a Ukrainian gas company while Vice President Biden led the Obama administration's diplomatic dealings with Ukraine. Presidential scholar Mina Bose notes there's no evidence of any wrongdoing by either Biden. Were there concerns about perceptions of conflict of interest? Perhaps. That's a far cry from corruption. The president says he couldn't have been targeting the Biden campaign because he never thought Biden would win the nomination anyway. Sagar Megani at the White House. Meanwhile, Ukraine's prosecutor general says his office is reviewing all the cases that were closed by his predecessors, including several related to the owner of a gas company where former Vice President Joe Biden's son sat on the board. AP's Zaria Shakali has details. Ruslan Ryoboshapka's comments came amid an impeachment inquiry against President Donald Trump that relates to a call he made to the Ukrainian president asking him to investigate the Democratic presidential candidate and his son's work in Ukraine. Ryoboshapka told reporters in Kiev that prosecutors are auditing all the cases that were closed or dismissed by former prosecutors, including several related to Mykola Shluchevsky, owner of the gas company Burisma that hired Hunter Biden in 2014. At the same time, his father was leading the Obama administration's diplomatic dealings with Kiev. I'm Zaria Shakli. And this is VOA News. Hong Kong's embattled leader Carrie Lam on Friday invoked colonial-era emergency powers to ban face masks in a dramatic move intended to quell escalating violence in the Chinese-ruled city. Reuters correspondent Matthew LaRotonda has more. We are now in rather extensive and serious public danger. And with that, Hong Kong's leader Carrie Lam announced she would invoke sweeping new emergency powers in an attempt to stop the city's months of violent unrest. This is the first time in over 50 years that Hong Kong has used its emergency laws, which allow the city to stop the protests by any means necessary. That includes curfews, censorship of the media, and control over transport hubs. For now, it seems the city has only banned face masks. It's not yet clear what else may be employed. Matthew Larotunda of Reuters. Iraqi police opened fire on protesters in central Baghdad Friday as hundreds gathered to demonstrate against the government. Reuters correspondent Gracie Jerome has details. Friday has become the deadliest in four days of protests in Iraq, where anti-government sentiment is growing. Police and medical sources say more than 45 people have now been killed as security forces open fire on the crowds, most in Baghdad and the southern city of Nasiriyah. The protests started on Tuesday over unemployment and poor living conditions, but have since escalated into calls for a change of government, which they say is corrupt. It's the biggest test so far in a year as Prime Minister for Adel Abdul Mahdi. It's the worst unrest in Iraq since the defeat of the Islamic State in 2017. Reuters Gracie Jerome. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar said Friday if Great Britain were to request an extension to its Brexit deadline, he would consider it. We get more from Francesca Lina of Reuters. Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar said on Friday that if Great Britain were to request an extension to its Brexit deadline beyond October 31st, he would consider it. Varadka also said that the previous deal agreed with former Prime Minister Theresa May allowed for checks to take place in ports and airports and not along the island Northern Ireland land border. Adding that the difficulty with what Johnson has put on the table is that it appears to create two borders, checks at the ports and airports and also near the land border. He said there was still a long way to go before he could back an agreement that carries the support of both the people of Northern Ireland and the people of the Republic of Ireland. Francesca Lina of Reuters. U.S. employers added a modest 136,000 jobs in September. That's enough to help lower the unemployment rate to a new five-decade low of 3.5%. For more, visit voanews.com. I'm David Bird, VOA News.